Happy Three Things Thursday, everyone. Hope you all are doing well, my loves. So today I feel inspired to speak about the importance of being aligned and embodied with what it is that you are saying and desiring to manifest. Hi, Trish. Nice to see you, love. Hi, yes. Salvia, hello. Um, so I'm going to go over three things. First one is we're going to talk about the cost of not being energetically aligned with what you say and then how you are actually showing up. And for a lot of people, this is actually a blind spot. Okay, they're just not self-aware. And we all have blind spots. And I believe, I truly believe, um, the, the way to evolve is to have, be aware of your blind spots, ask for feedback so that ultimately you do not have blind spots. I'm always asking for feedback. So um, that way I can grow because I can't see my own shit, right? Okay, and then number two is what happens when we are aligned, truly embodied, truly aligned, and that, that what, what actually happens on the outside world? Okay, I'm gonna talk about um, that and then I'm gonna share four simple steps so that you can start to be truly aligned. Hi, Kwong. Okay, so the first thing is I'm gonna give us some examples. So I'll share a personal example and I see this in, you know, over time working with clients, I see it um, just being a witness to people who, um, like I can sense it, but that's what's going on and you guys might be able to resonate. So drop me some hearts and thumbs up or whatever um, to let me know you can resonate with this personally or you can see this as well. So a lot of times, of course, you know, of course, we want to monetize on our calling. I think that's really, really important, right? And yet, um, oftentimes, especially with newer businesses and this was my personal piece too. Um, we are trying to, we're trying too hard, but we don't think we are, right? We're, but we're trying to chase the money and then we become so attached to the outcome, so attached to that person working with you, so attached to closing the call, so attached, even if it wasn't a fit, right? So attached to um, the, the, the fact that if you don't, um, if, if, if you're not calling in the client and in a way that feels, even though you present, you present um, like it's not important, but energetically we feel it, right? Energy doesn't lie. That underneath the running tape is the attachment piece around money. So, um, I have seen people say, well, I'll just market to people so that they can um, have more money in their life. But meanwhile, they're actually not um, showing up energetically embodied in the energy of abundance. Okay, and abundance, I don't mean having lots of money. No, what I mean by that is truly being still internally and having peace so that you can share what you need to share and be in service to others and be in service so that you can truly serve and know that and not have this running tape like oh my god I better close this client oh my god I because there are people are gonna feel that from you people are gonna feel that from you and the the cost of that that's actually quite repelling it's, it's like this frustration that happens and the more frustrated you get, which are healthy feelings, okay? However, it's repelling, right? Energetically, it's repelling to be around. Hi, Alexis, this is live. No replay here, love. <laughs> right? And so, uh, hi, Deb. So this is really about seeing what it is that you want to manifest and how are you showing up energetically. A lot of times you're saying, like I'll even talk about other examples, just to put this into perspective. Um, you know, a lot of people want to have better health, 
whether it's weight loss, be leaner, be more muscular, um, maybe it's more internal health, so um, a better digestive system, more balanced hormones, but yet the behavior isn't aligned. The behavior is not aligned with it. There's self-sabotaging that's happening by emotional eating, um, e I mean, personal experience, really. <laughs> By um, not staying on track with eating foods that are aligned with your goals, right? Um, another one is you ask for, oh gosh, when I was a couples therapist, um, asking, wanting, inner, wanting peace in your relationship with your partner. And when it actually was there for a moment or an hour, all of a sudden, what happens, and I saw this often as a couples therapist, is drama would happen, like fights. And it's often because there is a new foreign um, feeling of peace. It's like, shit, this does not feel comfortable because it's new. But And what was comfortable before, even though it's not working, is the fighting, is the arguing, is the drama. And once people understood that, so we either have mind drama within our relationship with ourselves, with, with health, with money, um, with, um, you know, our, uh, and then in our relationships, right? And in business. So your, your external results in your life, like what your life looks like right now, is a reflection of your internal state of mind. Your belief systems, they may serve and support you. So look at all the things that are happening. If you want to look at a life wheel, are where it, it in the life wheel, because our life isn't perfect, do you notice things are working for you? Relationships, and I'm just going to name a few things, few things on the life wheel. Relationship, friendships, contribution, um, uh, business or career, okay, uh, spirituality, and health so these are just some aspects on the life wheel if you google it there will be like um i believe it's they they differ but there can be like 12 different areas in your life to look at and so where in your life do you feel like you're um feeling challenged and then you're not quite at the goal you would like to be at right and so now you got to look back at yourself okay the biggest thing because let's talk about the benefits. The biggest thing, when you are energetically aligned, manifesting only happens when your conscious mind, so your conscious wants and desires, are matching with your subconscious. If your subconscious ha is, is running a tape around something that's holding you back, around a limiting belief, so I want to have more money, I want to have more clients, I want to have better health, but yet you keep engaging in sabotage, that's on you. Then we gotta look at ourselves. And what I see happen is blame, victim, right? That does nobody any good. Victim card, we all have one, is when you blame someone else or yourself. This isn't about blaming. This is taking a personal accountability, which was one of my greatest lessons, taking personal accountability to look at yourself. Okay, I'm already going to steps. To look at yourself. So that when you are looking at yourself, you're going, okay, what is it about me that I may not be aware of right now? And that's where you can ask for feedback from your coach, from people you trust, or even... If you're in a mastermind, ask people who don't know you very well, right? And, and for example, on a Facebook Live, if you're wanting feedback from a Facebook Live, ask people how, you know, if you're wanting feedback on how engaging am I, how valuable is this information to you? Ideally, these people are your ideal clients. Um, is this helpful, you know, and give me feedback on, on helping me improve. Um, one of my mentors, Corey Poirier, he told a story one time about how somebody wrote a book and he distributed it to um, 
his uh, like a group of people who he just asked to be in his uh, research project and he said read this book and tell me where in the book did you stop reading because his goal was to have people read the book from beginning to end and not be able to put it down and so he asked and this just takes a lot of round of really courageousness right i mean a book is so personal and your message is so personal and so for him what he did was he was very open to feedback and he looked at everybody's responses of what page what paragraph and and why they stopped and they put it down so that he wrote it and retweaks it until he everybody could not put the, put the book down isn't that incredible and so if we can invite that part of ourselves where we can be truly open to um looking at ourselves no matter how fucking scary it is i have done the work guys and i continue to do the work and the most powerful work I've ever done was exactly this in um, integrity seminars, level two, where I'm in a group of strangers and these people don't know me. They're giving me feedback. And my victim card was very apparent to people who were all mirrors for each other, okay? who um, were loudly victims in their life. I wasn't a loud victim. It's very fucking subtle for me, okay? And I'm sure there's way, times where I can slip into it. And I do. And luckily, because I do the work, I'm like, fuck, I'm gonna call myself out, you know? And go, okay, it's not helpful to be in the victim. Okay, I'll let myself out my paper, and then I'm moving on, taking count by what is it about this situation and my co-creating? Where is my part in it? What's my accountability? And um, looking at then the beliefs, right? So number one, okay, I'm gonna be more practical here. Well, number one, stop being a victim, okay? Don't blame yourself or blame other people. Look at your open eyes and ask yourself that question. What is it about me right now, my limiting beliefs and how I'm showing up, that's not helpful? Not in a judgy way, but in a self-compassionate way. Um, everything is neutral until you put meaning to it. And how we do that is based on our belief systems. And so belief system also BS, right? And so based on our core beliefs, which were formed before the age of eight, and we run these, these stories in our head, if we haven't done the inner work or the, again, we're onion layers and it's still going to pop up. And it's gonna pop up and, and maybe it's less intense, but it's again, it's gonna be more subtle, okay? It's gonna pop up as a theme in your life. Then it's being aware of how, what story am I telling myself right now? Because this event is neutral. This event is neutral. And so when you can really truly look at yourself, it is so freeing. It's so freeing because then you can change it if you decide to. Not everybody does. People, some people like to stay in their victim card, okay? Um, it's your choice. Do you, want to be, do you want to be right or do you want to reach your goals, right? <laughs> All right? So this is not about right or wrong. This is about what is getting in my way. Um, and ask yourself, who, like, are you, who do you want to become? Who do you need to be? In order, in that next level version of yourself, it's still you. It's still authentically you. But we need to peel those masks back. Off, 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 right? And who is it that you need to, what is it that you need to work through to become that version of you that lives in your most desired dreams? Okay? I hope that makes sense. Is that making sense to you guys? Give me some hearts if it is. Um, if you have questions, throw it in here. I can see you guys. And... Again, ask for feedback. Ask people, hey, can, do you mind looking at this Facebook Live? Uh, I'm looking for, and ask for specific feedback. I'm looking at what you like about it, what you didn't like about it, and why. Um, your, I respect your opinion. I, expect your, I respect um, any constructive criticism you can give me. Because when you do that, you just get to prove it is not fucking personal. That's the piece that is the hardest for all of us, is we take shit personally and um that makes sense because at the very core of us we want to feel loved safe 
and belong. And so um, when somebody constructively criticizes something that feels so deeply personal to us, um, which could be our, our work, right? Or how we show up, are we dressed on brand? That's a pretty touchy subject. Um, how, how we, how we um, show up in terms of, like we all have good intentions, I truly believe that, right? And sometimes those intentions don't match. And when somebody calls us out, oh, right? And we're not willing to really look at ourselves, we're gonna blame, we're gonna get angry, we're gonna be like, you're fucking wrong, right? And I'm not judging those people. I understand from a psychologist perspective, given that I was a former registered psychologist, how this works. You know, and when you're in your own shit, it's too close. You can't see the tr forest from the trees. This is why it's really important to ask for feedback. Last thing is there's something called uh, Jahari's witness, uh, window, sorry. So in this, there there's four things. What you see and what other people see. What you see and others don't see or know about you. Okay, so what you see about yourself and what others see about yourself. Sorry, I should be more clear. What you see about yourself and others don't see about you, and then there's the vice versa. Others see, but you don't see about yourself. That's a blind spot. And what you don't see and what others don't see. Okay? So these two last ones are really important to keep working on. I love it when people call me out. I do. I'm like, thank you. Let me look at that. For, let me look at myself. Let me look at myself. I fully will take responsibility for my co-creation in it. I'll learn from my mistakes. That is a good thing when somebody calls you out. But when you react with anger and when you react with blame, that just shows fear. And that's okay. That's not a bad thing. It, unfortunately though, this is a pattern and you keep reacting that way, it's gonna keep you stuck. Right, so this is really about taking a breath, allowing yourself to honor your feelings and going, wow, how else does this show up in my life? Because nothing is personal, right? And so notice other relationships, notice this pattern, how else it shows up if you're sabotaging in your business, if you're sabotaging in your health, if you're sabotaging in your relationships, what is it about the way you're not showing up or showing up that is getting in your way. All right, so my loves, I hope that this was helpful. I would love to know, I know, I know this was a longer Facebook Live. Clearly I have a lot to say about this because honestly, it was my, one of my accountability, taking accountability, personal accountability, personal responsibility was hands down one of the most life changing things that have happened to me not to me, for me, sorry, not to me, because I was victim, for me, see, caught myself, right, for me and through me, okay, things don't happen to us, we only think that way if we're in victim, okay, so life doesn't happen to you, how life is happening for you and through you, so if you can look at what's going on and find the lessons, usually there's more than one, and this one I'm very passionate about, personal accountability is something I'm very passionate about, and um, that's, uh, and let me know guys, if you've, you um, have done the work in personal accountability, tell me, I'd love to see if that was a huge lesson for you, or maybe this is new for you to really, really look at. Um, I'd love to know what your takeaways are from this. It's deeply important that we do our own work because it's going to sabotage us in business and in our relationships, and it's in our, like different aspects in parenting if we don't look at ourselves and it's a continued process. All right, so I look forward to hearing your comments. Bye guys.